What's going on? Live and direct on the air. Live and direct on the air. Y'all already know the brand. Freedom is a must. Freedom is definitely a must. Hoping everybody's well, everybody's safe, everybody's healthy. Back in the days when I was in HDM, uh, before they even closed the HDM, I was moved from C95 with a bunch of dudes because they used to move dudes out the building certain days only because they needed the room for the guys that were on drugs that were coming through. And uh, I landed, I think, a two block, five block. I was there with Caballo, Julio, and his nephew, Little Caballo, Emilio, Luca was there. And a lot of, a lot of old times was there. You know, I keep telling dudes that when uh, I came through, I was taught by, by the elders, taught the right way. You know, saying how things are. I wasn't taught by no youngsters. You know, what I'm saying that's why I know a lot of things that I know and I move how I move because I learned from the elders. The elders taught me. So when I went to HDM, they were there, a lot of dudes. And uh, there were sections there. Either African Americans had the whole front side or the back side, or the Hispanics had the front side or the back side, whichever. Anyway, when I got to the block, all the Spanish brothers was in the back. But there's Dominicans, Puerto Ricans, they was in the back side. And those that know HDM, if you know, there's two sides to there. And in the middle is a cutoff where you go up the stairs to go eat upstairs or you can talk to the other dude from the other side and shit. But that separates the back from the front. You know, those are long tears. You know, HDM, I would say, that's the real, real jail, you know? How, how the cells look and stuff like that. So I moved, I got moved there. And uh, I met a lot of bros, there was a lot of brothers there. And everything was smooth, there was no drama, none of that. You know, back in them days, old timers really respected each other. You know what I'm saying? There was no drama like that. But, uh, you know, when something happened, that means that something was serious for shit to happen. You know what I'm saying? So, you know, things like that, dudes really respected each other and did some grown man shit back then. So, when I was there, I met a, I met a brother, which happened to be my next door neighbor. And uh, he happened to be, matter of fact, the Supreme Crown representative of uh, HDM. You know, every, every building had their representatives for kings. He was a representative. And I'm not going to mention his name either, man. You know what I'm saying? But those that know, they know. And uh, this brother had a lot of beef with mad people. He was no sucker. You know what I'm saying? He was a real dude. And uh, he had beef, man, with a lot of African Americans. You know, stuff like that, fighting and whatever. You know what I'm saying? So much beef, man. You know, that I used to tell him, yo, man, when you go up north, man, you got you, you, you gonna bump into these dudes. They're gonna fuck your bit up, man. So in any event, I was getting uh I was getting three, four grams of dope up in there on a regular. And if th those don't believe it, I'm a tag team. I had two best friends, two girl best friends ever in my life, Angie and T. And uh, T used to go up there and, and bless me only because she know the situation, she know what it is, and uh, she knows do had, we had to eat. And you know, that was a method in the prison where you could get rid of and you could, uh, you know, make your commissary build up, you know, the commissary, whatever. <clears throat> so T used to go up there <clears throat> like every two weeks to bring something up. And what I do is I used to spread the love, not because of no protection shit, or I was under pressure, none of that shit, just because bros was there. Some bros didn't have it. <clears throat> Excuse me. And uh, as a brother, as a real dude, I know other dudes had to live. You know what I'm saying? It's only right. That's what brothers is for. You know what I'm saying? To, to hold each other down. So, first, first one I hit is the brother next door. Boom, take that grand for you, man. Go do whatever you got to do. You know, I wasn't worried about if they were sniffing it or not. You know, I knew that by the rules, you're not supposed to. Whatever they did on their own over there, if they did it, that was them. I ain't fuck with that. My shit was money. My, my thing is money. So, I gave him a grand. And uh, I blessed I blessed half of the, bro, the bros that were there. You know what I'm saying? 
there were some other bros in other houses, you know what I'm saying, that we got to see here and there. I blessed too, you know what I'm saying, so they can live, make their little money, get their commissary. So, you know, I was there for like, I think a year, year and a half or something like that. Soon, soon after, I got packed up to go up north. And it was years and years that I didn't see this brother that was next to me, the Supreme Brother. And I ain't seen it for years, man. So one day, after many years, I end up in Clinton. And the first day I got there, you know, they quarantine you for three days, make sure you ain't got no drama with nobody. But you know, the reason they do that, they put you to, to look and see when dudes go out the child, so you can look around, supposedly, and, 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 and you can see if you see one of your enemies and, 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 and report it or whatever. So that's a three-day quarantine to make sure you ain't got no drama on nobody and then they let you out, get your property, do what you gotta do. After the quarantine, I, I, I went to Chow. I think it was breakfast. And when I went to breakfast, I see this brother that I ain't seen in so many years that was next door to me in HDM. The one I used to hit off, you know what I'm saying? So he get right. And uh I said, oh shit, nigga, what the fuck? I ain't seen you in so long. Excuse my French. I, I ain't seen you in so long, man. How you been? What's going on? So he's further down a little bit, and he's looking at me with a look that I understood, like, who the fuck are you? Like, who's you? I said, bro, really? You don't remember me, man? Look at me real good, nigga. You don't remember me? And I started to say bits and pieces, HDM. You know, I ain't mentioned that other stuff about the drugs, whatever. But HDM. And, you know, and he's looking at me and I said, said, damn, man, that's sad you don't remember me, man. So anyway, we parted. Lunch time came, I see him again, and he looked at me like if he remember me. Yeah, 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 yeah. Said, yo, I got to tell you, I got married. My kid's big. I'm, I'm living up here in Albany and all that stuff there. And, uh, yeah, go outside, go outside, night wreck, show, show you pictures or whatever. Cool, all right. So, you know, I still find it like, you know, I don't think he remember me because if he did, it'd have been a different reaction. You know, I know. So anyway, I go to the yard and I'm looking around to the courts and yeah, I see him. So I go to the court. When I go up to the court, he sit me down, yo, yeah, hug, all that. And he sit me down, said, let me show you the pictures. He showed me the pictures, his wife just got married and all that stuff there because he had a lot of time to do too. And, uh, so he's showing me all this. While he's showing me all that, you know, I take a quick look. I see three dudes coming from, from his angle. And then I see like three other dudes from another angle. Like, son, don't smell right. What's going on here? You know, too many funny movements. And sure enough, they were coming towards the court. So while they was going towards the court, three of them, because you know, you only have a, a, a few dudes in the court, I think a six to a court. It was already me and the dude in the court, plus those six coming in. So when they were getting closer and I kept like looking, this dude tapped me, yo, yo, yeah, and this right here, and this picture was here, this is the day we got married, to distract me from what, what was about to happen. So it was, was kind of chilly out there, so that time, you know, when you you in Clinton and it's chilly, you put about three or four sweaters, a couple of socks, you know, to keep warm because it get cold as my cancer. So when he tapped me like that to look at the stuff, the dude ran in, the other dudes ran in, and uh, the one dude, I ain't going to mention his name either, but I'm going to tell you a story about this dude that I didn't even know he was there, and I knew also, and I'm going to tell you how I knew him. Anyway... The dude come in and the dude hit me in the side about six times with an ice pick. Ba 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 ba. So I jump up. When I jump up, the other three dudes was the one that was coming in to take the banger, put the banger away, and it looked like a commotion in the court of how it happened. And me getting up, so 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 the police up top called on the thing. Like, what's going on? Whatever, too many in the court. Boom. 
So once they do that, the other police that's walking them out of the yard, they start to walk up at the court. Snatch me up. They, 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 you know, they know something was wrong. So when they snatch me up to bring me in, they ask me, yo, what's going on? Ain't nothing going on. You, you, you know, you just snatched me up. It's in the yard. You know, I just got here. I broke the whole situation now. So they look around and shit. They start to search me. And they see these holes. Right on my, on the side. Call the sergeant in, whatever. Boom, they take me to the clinic. Made me take all my clothes off. Boom. The ice pick went through all three sweaters. And it went all three sweaters. And what's crazy is that when they took anything off to look at my skin, you could see the point of the ice pick just touch my skin. Thank God, you know, they didn't go through, through, thanks to the sweaters. So they put me in IPC. Before they put me in IPC, they locked me up and they put me back in the same tier. I guess to find room the next day or whatever on IPC. They asked me in the clinic, oh, what, what happened? Boom, I don't know who did what, I don't know who did shit. You know what I'm saying? Because I already know, I was told by the adults and I, I came, you know, before prison, I came from the streets. I know what it is to tell whatever, you know, you're not supposed to tell what you, you hear, you don't hear, you see, you don't see, you get what I'm saying? And that's been the code since a kid. So they took me, they took me to the cell. In the cell, this dude that was next to me in HDM that was up there that had me look at the pictures and send the other dude to hit me up that I knew too. And, and the dude didn't remember me either. And I know the dude. I'm gonna tell you what, how I know the other dude that hit me. It just bugged out. So I sent a kite to both of them. I said, yo, bro, damn, really? You ain't remember who I was and you ain't give me a chance to explain. So you could remember who I was. You know, you call me as one of them dudes that you had drama with and you didn't even have drama with me. You thought I was one of them dudes that you had drama, you couldn't remember. That's how fucked up your mind was that you thought I was one of them niggas that you had beef with me because you couldn't remember. You classified me as that and you thought I was an enemy and you said the hit out. It was me before you and it wasn't even like that, bro. And then I sent a kite to the other dude who I know, who I, I, I just seen in that yard that day and I was about to, to tell him what up. He acted like he didn't even remember me either. I'm gonna tell you his story. So he brought me a, a kite back and he said, yo, uh, I have to explain who I was and what I did for him and his moms in the streets back in the days when he caught his case. So he, uh, they both wrote back and funny thing is they both wrote back and they said uh, yo what's done is done you can't can't take that back man done is done alright done is done a few days later they moved me to IPC both of them dudes know I kept it real they know I kept it real cause they would have been in the box locked up they know you know what I'm saying and if I got the get the dude, tag him or whatever after on this video, you know what I'm saying? Because I ain't trying to put the dudes out there, you know what I'm saying? But I tag him and these are real dudes. These ain't no no chocolate dudes, no dudes, you know, hummer stuck and all that. These is real dudes known by inside, outside by people, known as real dudes. You know what I'm saying? And so, I kept that real in that situation. So they never... Went to the box, got locked up for all that there. They can verify that. But check this out. The dude that hit me, back in the days, I was second crown of all, all Brooklyn. And uh, at that time, I came up in the ranks with King Tone. King Tone was fourth. I was fifth. He went to third. I went to fourth. We moved up. We moved up together from Brooklyn, Tiger Tribe. And... Uh, a situation happened in Bay Ridge. Matter of fact, they just had split the tribes. First and second division Tiger tribe. I was the one that started the Pee Wees. This dude that stabbed me up was one of my Pee Wees that I brought up. You know, teaching them the ropes of, of keenism and, and bringing them up. He was, he was one of my, my Pee Wees. 
Anyway, when he caught this charge that he went to jail for, that uh, he came out wrongfully convicted on. Now he's home. He was wrongfully convicted, came out and shit, you know, I think a year back, a year back, some, some change, two years maybe. Uh, they had caught a body in the club somewhere. Those that's listening know this, know this story right here, what I'm talking about, they're already putting together who the dude is. And so, a dude got bodied in the club, he got caught for it, he went into prison. The dude that they said he had bodied was part of another clique. And so the other clique had threatened the moms. And they was gonna go up there and kill his moms, this, that. He was scared, you know, he loved his moms, whatever, he, whatever. The word got to me and uh, I called King Grandpa and King Ray. I said, yo, strap up. You already know, long, long jump off, which is the shotgun, short, you know, the shorty, whatever, come over, meet me over here at the club. And uh, we talk when we get here. They came over, they, they, they met up with me in Best Style, and uh, we took off to Bay Ridge. We went to Bay Ridge to stay with this guy that stabbed me up, mom, his mom, in the house, three to four days, strapped up. So if these dudes come over there, they was gonna get it. Look at that, the dude that hit me up, go and remember, at that minute, and I didn't get a chance to talk to at that time before that happened, because I just I got there, and this dude, other dude, his mind is fucked up, thinking it's a drama, it's a beef, it wasn't even no beef. We was cool like that. So, we stood in there three to four days, watching his mom, making sure these dudes don't pay themselves, and all that. And uh, three to four days, nothing happened. They knew that we was on guard out there, because we were Kept going out to the front, kept going upstairs, and dudes came by, was going by looking, yeah, we here. So they knew, plus they knew that with one call, we call all the brothers from second division, I mean uh first division tiger drop, and they pop up on second division. You know, we was everybody was alert. I said the alert already. Listen, anything go on, I make make the call, y'all already know. And for some reason, every time I, I used to make calls for any issue. And people out of Bay Ridge were the first ones on the scene. First ones. If I was in the Bronx, I was anywhere. Yo, shit about to pop. Make that one phone call, them Pee Wees, them young kids. They was out there. Out of Bay Ridge. So, you know, there was, there was real dudes over there. Little Julio, uh, my, my, my brother. You know what I'm saying? Uh, little Meg, rest in peace. You know, green eyes, cheeky, all them dudes. That was from over there, you know what I'm saying? And uh, Andrea, Queen Andrea, you know, that was all from over there. Anyway, so I didn't get to explain to this dude that I was the one that went over there to take care of that mission to make sure his mom was right and nobody did not to his mom, you know what I'm saying? And so, you know, the brother came home. Later on, I found out the brother, before he came home, he was wrongfully convicted as y'all guys know that's what I do you know what I'm saying uh help the wrongfully convicted prison reform advocate and uh I started to look up his case and stuff too man and it's funny because I happen to be with the guy's co-defender in Elmira the one that actually uh, uh had committed the you know the crime for that body and made it known that made this other brother that hit me up that I, I protected his moms, made him come home wrongfully, you know, wrongfully convicted, the person that didn't do the crime. And so that that that's the story, man. You know what I'm saying? That I knew I kept it real, you know, and, and it's just a small world how, you know, how people forget about people that did good things for other people's man. You know what I'm saying? And forget and right away think that it was drama. You know, because you have so much drama. See, I ain't had drama like that. So, you know, I mean, if I, if I had little beefs, it was fist fights, this, that, son quit, left it as that, nothing major. And I can remember those situations. You know what I'm saying? And, you know, I didn't have to look back like that because 
I said I was a dude that got along with everybody, man. You know, African American, Mexican, Puerto Ricans, everybody. Everybody that know me know that, man. I get along with everybody. You know what I'm saying? So, you know, I was surprised that that had happened with this brother that, you know, I looked out for. We was down there for a year, year and a half together. We broke bread, you know what I'm saying? We ate together, you know what I'm saying? Watch each other, you know, each other's back down there, make sure nobody come from behind his back. He watched my back, even though it wasn't necessary because, you know, I didn't have no beef like that. But I know that the dude had a lot of drama. But to show you that later on in years, all the time that he had to do, he was so messed up that he couldn't uh, remember if I was beef or not. But this brother and the brother that hit me, they know they never went to the box. They never got caught up. They never got a tier three, never got a ticket, none of that stuff for that situation because I kept it funky. You know what I'm saying? And that's my story that happened up in Clinton. Coming up all the way, you know, starting from HDM and then, you know, and then, you know, this was an HDM before they shut it down. You know, way before they shut it down. But the time going to Clinton was years and years later. You know what I'm saying? It wasn't around a time when HDM was still open or it was about to be closed, you know, and stuff like that. HDM was already closed already for, for a while, you know what I'm saying? So, you know, just to let you know, that's what happened to Clay, man. You know, things happen, shit happen, man. And it's stuff that, you know, things is, is meant to be for a reason, you know. We leave it in God's hands. You know, what's, what happened, what happened. Thank God, them things ain't go through. You know what I'm saying? Thank God I'm able to speak about it. You know what I'm saying? I mean, you know, I'm able to express to you guys what what happened and shit, man. And that I'm alive. Yeah, I'm alive to speak about it, man. You know what I'm saying? And these are true facts, real talk, real shit. Stories that actually happened in there. See, a lot of people out here in the streets that never been in that situation or have been there but never did real time in real places, they don't know because they ain't been through it. They ain't experienced it. You know what I'm saying? And shit was real back then in them times. You know what I'm saying? And, you know, they just don't, they don't know. You know what I'm saying? But uh, that's the story, y'all, man. Y'all peace out. Remember to please share, like, comment, subscribe to all my pages, my YouTube, live and direct on the air, my TikTok, live, live and direct on the air, my Instagram, live and direct on the air, your support. Not only brings change, it brings awareness. You know what I'm saying? It helps me to keep pushing for those that are, 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 are in prison, wrongfully convicted, or not prison reform. Keep fighting for them. It gives me that boost that you know somebody out there cares for what I do, and it pushes me to keep doing what I'm doing, man. You know, and I appreciate your support. I appreciate all my subscribers, all my followers, man. And uh, even if you don't like it, you know what I'm saying? Share it with somebody else might like it. You know what? You might have somebody that uh, is interested in the topic that want to know that maybe that they were there. They can speak about it. Make a comment on there. You know what I'm saying? So I appreciate you guys. Y'all already know the brand freedom is a must. Freedom is definitely a must. Free all my people. Let my people go. Peace.